Welcome back to Out of the Fog. Before the break, we told you a little bit about the new Broadway musical. It's called Come From Away, which has hit theaters in Gander, Toronto, and Broadway. Joining me now to tell us about the musical, her character, and if there are any extra pressures on being the only Newfoundland actress involved is Petrina Bromley. Welcome to Out of the Fog. Thanks so much, Erin. It's lovely to be here. It's great to have you here. So congratulations on <laughs> this show, Come From Away. Uh, we show, before the break, we were just telling everybody that, of course, we showed them a little preview of what it looks like on stage. But how would you describe Come From Away? Uh, you know, it, it's a fascinating uh, staging because it's very simple, but at the same time, it's incredibly complex. All we ever do is move around, uh, I think it's 13 chairs and three tables, but it becomes absolutely every place that we occupy in Gander, on the plains, uh, um, in the airport, everywhere. And, and it seamlessly does that because of Chris Ashley, who's the... Uh, director, of course, who did an incredible job of choreographing and, and manipulating everybody into those scenes, along with Kelly Devine, who is our choreographer. So in the clips that I saw, I mean, it seems very uplifting. There's so, obviously, it's a musical. There's so much music. Um, but when you compare that then to, you know, that day on September 11th mm -hmm. and, you know, the emotion around that, the, the tragedy around that. Um, so, I mean, you, just give us a sense of, I guess, the emotions that, you know, the audience, you hope the audience kind of gains from this particular musical. I think it runs the gambit. I, it's one of those uh, rare situations where you find yourself laughing and then crying and then laughing again. And there's smiling to break your face, but you're, you have this uh, welled up sense of, of sadness as well. It's really, really wonderfully done. Uh, the writers, David Hine and Irene Sankoff, really crafted this incredible piece, and it's all true. Uh, that takes you on a bit of a roller coaster through what was happening during those days in Gander and surrounding areas as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the, their intention is to show you that against a backdrop of such an incredibly tragic event, there was joy and there was uh, fellowship and there was community created in Gander by people who were just being the generous people that they normally are and who didn't think they were doing anything all that spectacular. Tell me about the two writers. You mentioned them, but they, they're Canadian writers. They, they, they wrote this musical. They're from Canada. They're a married couple. They have a little daughter, Molly, who's very sweet. Uh, they were living in New York at the time uh, of 9-11, so their lens on the whole thing was very focused on what had happened in New York because they had been there and they had experienced what had gone on. And they were approached by Michael Rubinoff, who is the dean of Sheridan College, many, many young Newfoundlanders, go to Sheridan College to study musical theater and uh, technical theater. Uh, so he had this uh, idea, he knew the story, and had the idea that it would make an incredible musical and approached a lot of people who said to him, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think this is a musical, but good luck. And he met them after they had a show called My Mother's Lesbian Wiccan Jewish Wedding, which is another true story about David's mother who had a lesbian Jewish weekend <laughs> wedding. Uh, and the story of that was turned into that musical and was a fringe hit in Toronto at the Fringe Festival that subsequently got picked up by Mervish and played in one of their big theaters in Toronto, which is a very rare and incredibly uh, generous thing to have happen to them. Uh, so Michael approached them with the idea of turning this into a show and they said, oh, well, well, we'll look into it. And as soon as they started researching it, they realized this is an incredible story and a beautiful story. And they went to Gander on the 10th anniversary when there was a big anniversary celebration in mm -hmm. Gander and met many, many people, many of whom are in the show, um, and were able to spend a significant amount of time with them, interviewing them, talking to them. All the other media outlets that were there were, of course, looking for the quick sound bite of here's the one line from Claude Elliott or here's the one line from Beverly Bass. And uh, David and Irene were completely different. They stayed for several days. They lived at people's houses. They kind of had their own come from away experience. They also experienced that generosity. And so then they, of course, had thousands of hours of interview tape to go over. And they selected uh, as few stories as they could get away with uh, selecting. And the very first version of the musical, which was done at Sheridan, because Michael wanted it to be a project for the Sheridan students to go through, which I think is brilliant, uh, the Canadian Musical Theatre Project, he has that on the go there now, and I, I think they're in their third year mm -hmm. or more of creating and developing new Canadian musicals with the students as kind of a, 
uh, guinea pigs <laughs> for the writers to, to use to create new theater, which is a wonderful way for the students to experience the creative process uh, and an incredible resource for writers. So they did the first production at Sheridan, and um, from there it has been uh, kind of shaved down <laughs> into the version. Our version is about 102 minutes. And, and it's, there's no intermission. It moves very quickly. No one ever feels like they've been there for more than half an hour. We've often been told that people want more. But um, the version in uh, Sheridan, I believe, was longer. Mm -hmm. And before it was ever performed, when they were workshopping it elsewhere, it was even longer. So they joke that the first script was four days long. So, <laughs> <laughs> so they eventually pared it down to what we're doing now. And, um, and have done an incredible job with it. And helped all along the way by Chris Ashley, mm -hmm. uh, who is a very hands-on uh, director, very smart, very um, just good at getting to the heart of what a situation is in terms of let's not have a whole lot of extra words or a whole lot of extra space even, you know what I mean? Uh, so it's all very economical, but it is no more or less text than you need. It's, it's kind of, would you say, a science when it comes it's to totally theater? It's totally a science. Well, because when oh you talk gosh, about yeah. these little gaps, you know, leaving room to breathe, uh, and I guess audience interpretation, and to get that emotion and that feeling that you're trying to portray. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh, yeah. And it changes from show to show. We will get notes at the, <laughs> the end of a show. If, you know, for a period of time the show has been getting longer, we'll be told by stage management, Pick up your cues. <laughs> Less acting all over the place, everybody, and just get to... Because a lot of the times, if the writing is good, the acting is just saying the words that are there. Mm -hmm. You don't have to put a whole lot of emotion on top of it because people hear the story that you're telling and they immediately have their own reaction to it, which is very much what happens with this show. We've played it in the States, uh, in La Jolla, Seattle, and Washington, and uh, the American reaction to 9-11 is a very different reaction than we have in Canada because it's so close to the bone for them. It's a watershed moment in their history. A lot of people have immediate connections uh, either in at the Pentagon or in New York or uh, I think it was Pennsylvania was where the other plane went down. Um, so did you feel a difference performing in the States versus sure. performing in Canada? For sure. Yeah. I mean, we had a wonderful reception in Toronto, absolutely. A lot of Newfoundlanders, flag-waving Newfoundlanders all the time coming to the show, which is fantastic. We're not proud at all. No, oh my God, right? <laughs> not proud at all, no. Um, but And that was great. And it, the wonderful thing about that, for me personally, was that it made Canadians proud of being Canadian which we kind we don't toot our own horns very much. And in Newfoundland, we really don't, you know. I mean, the people, everybody in Gander is like, we made some sandwiches and, you know, we took care our of washers and dryers yeah. to people. Like, it's not that big a deal. But for 7,000 people to show up on your door and for you to go, okay, we'll deal with it, is an incredible, incredible thing. Um, but in the, in the States, people... Uh, and this happens in Canada, too. I think when, when we start, we timestamp everything so that you know this is Tuesday at this hour on September 11th. This is where we start. And people immediately start having their own, I know exactly where I was. I know exactly what I was doing. I remember it. I mean, I think everybody who, I, of a I certain can, age, I mean, yes, there are yeah. certainly people who are too young to have this experience, but... I certainly know exactly where I was I know I was exactly at that moment, where yeah. I was. I can picture my living room, my television, my mm -hmm. mom is with me. Like, I, I have, it's visceral for me. And I wasn't even doing anything all that exciting. I was sitting at home watching it on TV. But everybody then starts reliving it mm -hmm. as they're watching the show, and, and we go day by day through the five days. Um, and in the States, that there's just much more, uh, there's a tension to it, but because the show itself has such levity, it doesn't feel stressful. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but certainly, I had the opportunity uh, to actually sit in the audience in Washington because I was actually working elsewhere. I was working in Stratford for the this, this season, and they were very generous and replaced me for the period of time that I was unavailable. So I got to go down on September 11th, I flew to Washington, D.C. on September 11th. After I bought the ticket, I kind of thought, oh, wow, that's significant. Uh, so I saw the show the evening of September 11th, and the peop being in the audience and feeling what people feel when mm -hmm. they watch it, um, little tiny things that are set up that you find out more information about later, a lot of people were there already. We mentioned one pilot by name specifically, and I, the person next to me actually went, oh, 
because they knew what that person's story was. So it's very, very visceral for them in the States, uh, and less so. I mean, certainly there are people in Canada who have incredibly strong attachments to what happened on that day, but it's more pervasive in the US, I think. Um, so the reaction is, is much more intense, but then the, the relief that they get from living through it through new eyes is so much stronger. Did you, uh, you know, when you were presented uh, with this, was there ever a question to you or did you ever question as to whether or not you would, you know, do this particular show? Absolutely. Uh, my initial reaction, um, <laughs> I had met David and Irene in Gander on the 10th anniversary, walked into a coffee shop with a friend of mine, uh, Grant Tilly, who was down doing a show with us in Trinity, also a 9-11 story uh, written by Dean Burry from Gander. And um, we were there to perform the show at this anniversary celebration and walked in with Grant and he said, oh, these are my friends, David and Irene, they're from Toronto, they're, they're writing a show about the 9-11 experience in Canada. I was like, why is everybody, what is the big, me too, right? What's the big deal? Why? Who cares? And um, I met them there and they had kept in touch with me afterwards and had seen me um, performing in some artistic fraud shows, uh, so they knew my work. And um, they asked me to come down to New York and I just, and I was like, really? <laughs> am, I gonna, am I gonna do this? Because I thought there was no likelihood of it actually panning out because in my head I was thinking, well, David and Irene really want uh, to make a statement about what Canadian actors would bring to the show and in particular what a Newfoundlander might bring to the show. Uh, but in all likelihood, an American production happening in an American city with an American director they're going to cast people they know or names they recognize or, you know, any number of those things. So I went down thinking, I'm helping prove a point. <laughs> and if nothing else, I'll be able to tell the story of I auditioned in New York City one time. Uh, and that's really totally the expectation I went there with. Um, and then when they offered me the part and I read the script, I was like, oh, gosh, I don't know. And not that the script wasn't great, mm -hmm. but just that I thought wow, you could really mess this up. You could really do it wrong. You could really make us look kind of like yokels and, you know, the my constant fear of us being misrepresented as a stereotype. Um, well, because one of the other things I was wondering about, you know, as, you know, a Newfoundlander mm -hmm. and, and in this uh, production, was that even an, an additional pressure that maybe you put on yourself? Definitely one that I put on myself, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Um, but... In the end, when I, I, I mean, I said yes, because I thought, when am I ever going to get the chance to work in California ever in my life again? I'd be stupid to say no to this. It's ridiculous. Do it. At, again, at the very least, you can say, I worked in La, La Jolla, California one time. That's near San Diego. Have you ever heard of it? And be totally <laughs> proud of myself for that. Um, then I went down and, and like we had the first read through, I think, and there was so much emotion in the room, even with the read through, because you're talking about New York actors and directors and designers, all of whom have a connection to that day, most likely in New York City. Uh, so it was very emotional for them as soon as we started reading. And I could tell that everyone had their heart in the right place and that the director definitely had his heart in the right place and David and Irene absolutely did. I mean, these people are all their friends. Mm -hmm. They know everyone who's represented up there, know them well and care about them deeply. So they want everyone to be well represented, honestly. And uh, I think they've done an incredible job of capturing that. And it goes both ways. They don't want any of the American characters to appear stereotypical either. There's a couple of um, characters from Texas and um, a main character, but also some, some subsidiary characters. And there were never, ever were you allowed to go with something that was over the top and uh, stereotypical in the performance of these people. Because even if they're the one who's being a jerk, they need to be someone we recognize as real mm -hmm. and not as a cartoon. And they were so careful with that that uh, all of my concerns really just disappeared uh, through the first week or so. And I went, eh, this is going to be okay. <laughs> Tell me, because a lot of the cast got to meet a lot of the characters, uh, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, in Gander and elsewhere on your travels. What were those moments like, uh, whether it was, uh, you know, for you personally or even watching your you know, fellow cast members kind of meeting these people in which they're playing? It's kind of surreal. Uh, it's wonderful. And there's a strange, it's like a, like a blind date <laughs> because you really want to like the person and you really want them to like you, but you're not sure how it's going to go. <laughs> and in my case, when I met Bonnie Harris, who is incredible, a wonderful, wonderful person, and I immediately was like, 
I'm so lucky that you are who you are. Um, when I met her, there was a camera crew following me. It was like, this is weird. And I just wanted to say hi and thanks. <laughs> but, you know, it's such a heightened experience that um, uh, there's something different about it. But it was lovely. For me personally, it was fantastic. Uh, I met Bonnie at the SPCA. There were dogs and cats everywhere. We, like, cuddled puppies and got to know each other. And that, and, I mean, her story is an incredible story onto itself. Oh, my gosh, absolutely, yeah. She, because that's a, a, an aspect that I don't think many people really, you know, you don't think about where I the pet's did. going to go, no, you know, or even did. that they were like in cargo or... Yeah. yeah. Well, anybody who was happened to be traveling with their pet that day or was, uh, in one case, I know there was a, a Cocker Spaniel that was actually going from a breeder to a new owner. So there was kind of nobody traveling with that pet. Um, they're in the cargo and during an event like 9-11, the cargo was forbidden. Like you could not go anywhere near that because mm -hmm. they were still worried that there could be explosives or there could, there could be any number of things. It was a security risk, so you couldn't go there. Um, but Bonnie was very uh, uh, persistent and managed to, um, eventually, they were allowed to go into the cargo holds and at least find out how many animals there were and where they were and in what condition they were in, and then eventually able to take them off the planes. And they had to be kept in a hangar, but they could be kept together and walked and watered and fed and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so she took charge of that. And in amongst that, there were two uh, orangutans that were being uh, uh, brought to, uh, or bonobo chimpanzees, sorry, I don't know why I said orangutans. Two chimpanzees were being uh, transferred to a zoo mm -hmm. from uh, somewhere across the pond to uh, Columbus, Ohio, I believe it is. And um, so they had to be taken care of. They did actually have handlers with them, but uh, there were other circumstances that, uh, I don't want to give everything away for people who haven't seen the show, but there was, uh, there was some other crazy stuff that went on, yeah. Right. What, uh, reflecting, I guess, back since this all kind of started, you know, what kind of strikes you about this particular experience? Uh, it's been an incredible experience for me on every level, like professionally, personally, everything, because uh, it's opened my eyes to so many different things, just in terms of even uh, living and working in the States, which is something I never thought I would do. And not that I was particularly uh, against doing that. It just it had never occurred to me that I would have that opportunity. Um, and having that experience and, and meeting people and realizing that we are just kind of all the same, no matter where you're from, um, has been incredible and learning that people's work ethic is the same and and that even though there are different variations that in the world of theater we do kind of all do things the same way some people have some better ideas absolutely uh, but in general we we all have our own way of getting to where we need to go um, and it was interesting to see that in such a different environment um, and personally i mean i've met incredible people and continue to meet incredible people all the time uh, and the gift of being able to be a part of telling this story to essentially the world, uh, because New York is an international stage, uh, is something that I could never have predicted and could not be more grateful for. Uh, and particularly something that speaks so well of Newfoundlanders um, and so well of Newfoundland and Labrador mm -hmm. and makes us proud of who we are and has brought about this incredible uh, movement I think, and of the people who come to see the show, of just waving that flag, <laughs> which I think is so incredible. It's like, yes, we did an incredible thing. And in general, we have in our makeup some kind of very generous nature and spirit, which people tell us about all the time. But very rarely are we allowed to, in our own minds, are we allowed to be incredibly forwardly proud of it. I mean, mm -hmm. we pack each other on the back in private, but this is, this is not private in any shape or form. And being able to do that, and for me to be the Newfoundlander who gets to do that, uh, is, is incredible. Someone said to me the other day, they said, it's like you won the lotto. And I was like, you know what? You're totally right. I mean, I've been working very hard to win the lotto for a very long time. I haven't just bought the scattered ticket. I've been working my whole life towards this. But I did in the end. Like, yeah. I kind of won the work lotto and, uh, and right now have the greatest gig I could ever imagine myself having. Amazing. Well, listen, I'm going to leave it there. I want to thank you so much sure. for joining me. Congratulations thank and you. Uh, all the best with the run of the show. Thanks so much. All right, folks, we're going to take a very short break. It's been a wonderful time, of course, sitting down and chatting with Patrina Bromley. We will be right back. Stay with us.